So our product feature this month is going to be on Jungle Gems. This brochure is on Mako's website. If you go to resources, then literature, you can download this. I absolutely love it because it does tell you what Jungle Gems are, which what they are is a glaze with little crystals. And you can see on the bottom of this jar, you can see all the little lumps and chunks crystals mixed in with the base glaze so that when the crystals fire they bloom okay they bloom open and they become these beautiful chunks mixed into the glaze so we call them art in a jar because you can use crystal glazes by themselves just like this this one is pink pixie cg998 it is two coats on here all by itself couple other samples of the glazes by themselves. This is Pink Pixie on a different form. And you can see this two different glazers. I'm a little bit heavier, really put the crystals on. This one is a little bit different. So application makes a difference. Same as with this glaze. So you can use them by themselves or you can use them in design work like we did here. We have Firecracker, sassy orange, or maybe I did it backwards. And then we have an element, so they can be mixed with other glazes. It's very cool. Okay, this was done on some clay work. We're gonna be working on this. So let's talk a couple of things about crystal glazes. They are not dinnerware safe. I'm gonna say that first off, okay? The reason why is when those crystals bloom and open up, there is a little crazing around all of the blooms. So if you are putting crystal glazes on an earthenware dinner plate, we do not recommend that earthenware goes through the dishwasher. So it's almost impossible to properly sanitize the plate. So you will see in the brochure, this little icon, okay? It's a knife and fork with a line through it. We do not consider any of the jungle gems and dinner worth safe. So we recommend that you put them on decorative surfaces, hence the bunny. Now we also put this on the vase or the vase, but you'll notice we did not use crystal glazes inside. What we did is we used foundation glaze on the inside, and you can even just roll glaze with clear glaze on the inside, pour some in, run, you know, tremble it around and then pour the excess back into a pot. If you roll glaze with foundations, you're gonna use three parts glaze, one part water to thin it down a little bit. The slow rolling and letting it turn in there, since it's earthenware, it is going to absorb into the bisque and you will be fine. If you do roll glaze on the inside, we recommend you leave it upside down so the excess glaze comes out and it doesn't pool in the bottom, create, creating some, um, crawl back. And I apologize for the noises you might be hearing and the banging. Uh, we have some bad employees locked away and we won't let them out. Actually, I'm kidding. Uh, they're making glazes next door, <laughs> doing some of the crystal. So that's what you hear then working on the machines. All right. So that's crystal glazes. Important for you to remember, they are not dinnerware safe. However, you can put them on a plate that is decorative or if you're just gonna use cookies or you're gonna be cleaning up but not going through the dishwasher to make sure it's sanitary, sanitized. I wouldn't use it where I'm gonna be eating spaghetti or anything like that. If you use it on a bowl, use it on the outside of a bowl. If you put it on a mug, put it on the outside of the mug and drop it down a little bit where it's not on the rim. So this doesn't have it on there, but I would drop down the crystals a little bit so that the mouth is not going where the crystal glazes are, but you could put it out here. Okay. Teddy, there's a question. If they're using it on cone six, what are your guidelines for that? You know, it's a whole different animal on cone six. I'm looking behind me to see if I have anything. Because cone six, the stoneware is typically a vitrified body. As long as you, the body of the clay has properly vitrified, you can use crystal glazes on the body of it. Oh, that's not a good example because it is going to melt. It's not going to have near the cra uh, crazy marks at a higher temperature. It flows and melts more. Uh, so for example, on this pixie pink or pink pixie that we're using, 
it'll tell you mid-range color results, the base glaze and the crystals fade, but it might be a look you like. So I would test. When it comes to stoneware or mid-range glazing, you're typically okay to use the crystal glazes, but also know that they will change. So for example, in those handy dandy little brochure, we show you what the color chip's like at the attendant usage of 06, okay? But then if you keep looking, you can see that we fired it at cone six. This one was fired flat, this was vertical. So the glazes run a lot more when they are fired vertically at a cone six. And here's some samples of we using them in conjunction with mid-range glazes. So this brochure really gives you good information. All right, now you can see here like coral buff really has some crazing going on. So don't assume they're all gonna craze a lot or they're not gonna craze. You're gonna to want to look at each individual color. And we've done a lot of testing for you. Again, you'll go to resources on makeupcolors.com, literature, and you can download this brochure or possibly get it from your distributor. Thank you for asking these questions. I love it when you guys ask because I wanna make sure I'm giving you all the goods, okay? So crystal glazes are gorgeous, they're art in a jar, they're fun to use by themselves or in conjunction. Now having said that, we are combining the Jungle Gems Pink Pixie today with Elements Glazes. Okay, and somebody out there is going to go, wait a minute, Elements Glazes are a moving glaze. You're adding a moving glaze with a moving glaze? And I'm like, yes, we are. And because we want to show you that you can do different things with the glazes. So this literature also is on makeupcolors.com, resources, literature. Now you're going to notice there's a little icon. Elements are kind of all over the board. Some are dinnerware safe, like sea spray, but black ice is not considered dinnerware safe. All right, so anytime we say not dinner, we're safe, we're saying don't put it where your mouth or any food surface, okay? So you have all the little icons on here. It also talks about whether it's AP, suitable for all ages, when you uh, used according to the manufacturer's directions. Is it a caution or a CL label, which should not be used by, with children under the age of 12 or 12 and under? Dinnerware safe, not dinnerware safe. So this little brochure, I think is a beautiful reference point. You can also fire elements, which is typically a cone zero six glaze to a six. Again, you're gonna have different results and it's gonna perform differently whether it's fired flat or vertical and if you mix it with other glazes. All right, so these are two wonderful resources for you. So what we're going to do today is we have our Pink Pixie. We're combining Pink Pixie with Sea Green. Oh, it's mommy and daddy dating. And look, they had a beautiful little baby. So mixing pink, pink Pixie with Sea Green will give it this gorgeous result. Isn't that pretty? Look at the difference on that. That is just amazing. Okay. So those, that's one combination is with the sea green that we're gonna be doing today. This one with wheat, I didn't have you guys buy it, but I will give you the information. So we're gonna put wheat down first. This is what it looks like by itself. Two coats of pink pixie over the wheat. Oh, and look at the little baby. Isn't that pretty? I just love these. Now, somebody's gonna go, okay, why is this not running off of the bisque? So, we're going to recede the coats a little bit. So, I put a good coat on, one coat, and then you can see I re receded back just a little bit, maybe a, a you know, quarter of an inch, eighth of an inch, especially if you know that you're a heavy glazer. So, I'm gonna put two coats on here, and then the same with the crystals. I did two coats, but you can see that when I got down low, it's a little bit less. That's gonna keep our glazes from running off. So our fourth is taking Pink Pixie with, uh, also wants to know if there's any way to remove the Made in China stamp on the bottom. It, it will 
burn off. But here's the thing, there's a legal requirement for the consumer that consumers need to know of the origin of products or the country origin. So there's some uh, discrepancy on that. Does that mean it's on the box? Is it on the individual piece? We interpreted it that it needs to be on the individual piece because most people take the boxes, break it apart, and the consumer never sees where it is. So that is our interpretation, and that's what we're doing for legal reasons. So it should burn away. I haven't been hearing anything about it not burning off. So thank you for asking that. All right, so I hope you heard this. So we're doing two coats of rose granite, two coats of pink pixie, and here's this pretty little baby. All right, we're receding coats. So what I would do is I have several brushes, and if you have several brushes, this might be easy for you also. Uh, because they are the natural hair bristles, we do recommend that you prime your brush prior to using it. Just like when you wash your hair, you get your hair wet first and then you apply product. So that's what I'm going to do with my brushes. You can use the same brush if you want to, but to me, this is a little bit easier having several brushes for each color. So get your fist out, wipe it off, prime your brushes, and I'm not going to paint the wheat, but it's the same process, okay? And um, you can use this technique on just about any piece of bisque. Okay, so I'm going to take my Element C Green, shook it up, and of course I picked a bottle that is empty. <laughs> I'll go get that in a little bit. Or if Kaylin's listening, can you get me an EL-130? All right, take my deep water, always shake your glaze up. Granite EL 127. And a lot of the elements are black or they're that iron oxide color. So sometimes it can be a surprise when you all right, so what we're going to do is we're using the soft fan brush, which is meant to hold a lot of glaze, okay? So for any large areas, base coating, moving in, this is the glaze you want, I mean the brush that you want. I'm going to load my brush up nice and full, and we're going to apply two coats to the bunny. And I, because it's low fire earthenware, I always do the bottom of it as well. I want it to look good. If I was going to put this outside and try to leave it, you could even glaze the interior to help reduce the moisture. So we're gonna apply two coats. Soft fan brush is perfect for the fact that it does hold a lot of glaze. You can do nice, long flowing brush strokes and load that brush up, more is more. So we're laying down a coat. I reload frequently, yes? Okay, eight events, eight vibrations. I couldn't hear that. I think that was um, some sound from somebody's um, room, but it's I muted it now. Thank you. Can you yep. hear me? Yep, they can hear you. We're good. I really like how on that faceted button, you can see where the glaze kind of breaks on those faceted edges. So you can see how this would look on a textured piece as well. Exactly. Yeah, you can really see that here on the highlights, because you know, you're brushing across it, it's lighter than where I had flat areas. And that's the beautiful thing about Ellen's Mint glazes is that they're typically multi-tonal and when they flow and move and break, you're gonna get other aspects of the color. So for like this rose granite, you're gonna see that there's a little pink areas as well as the darker areas. So it gives you the highs and lows, almost like you're doing some shading onto yourself. And here on the deep water, I have some darker blue and it's lighter in some of the raised areas. So it's not a flat glaze. All right, so I have one coat on this bunny. I'm gonna to go to my next to the deep water. So we're going to work on all three bunnies at the same time. 
and I want to put two coats of elements, long flowing coats. We're laying down a coat of glaze, we're not stretching it. That's the biggest mistake people make is they try to stretch that glaze out and make it go as far as possible. We're laying down a layer of glass essentially, so you want to make sure that it's flowing. It'll help avoid any brush strokes also. So this brush is always my favorite. You'll, any of, if you've taken any of Mako's classes before, for the large areas, we always recommend using the soft fan brush. Now this one is in the CB line, CB604. In studio use where you have lots of customers, I like the reflection brush line better. It's plastic handle. So if you leave it soaking in the water, it's less apt to, for the wooden handle to absorb moisture and peel the paint off, okay? They both have the same type of bristles or natural hair bristles. They do great job. It just depends on your work style. And now I can't get the bottom because my finger's stuck in there. I'll come back and get the bottom of that. So this is why I have several brushes so that I can just keep working and I don't have to clean my brush every time. I know that's it. Could it be a laziness? Or maybe it's the height of efficiency. You decide. Oh my gosh, look how this just flows on. I do find it interesting that each glaze kind of has its own little personality on how it goes based on the composition. Now I have a little bit of blue on there from the deep water. I'm really not worried about it. If it's a little variance, it's probably going to be covered up when we apply the crystal glazes. That rose granite, it's so cool, you know, and customers can are really surprised as to how different they look when they're fired, you know, because this, the fired color is that really trendy kind of terracotta-y, pinky kind of color, but yes. I think one thing that has worked well for some studios is having little bowls that you can use, like real small ones that you can use to dispense the glazes into, so if somebody's going to paint with rose granite, you can pour some into that little bowl so they know what it's going to look like so they don't forget. You know, because if you have all these black and orangey colors sitting in front of you, it's very difficult. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that way they know what it's going to look like. Yeah, this is rose granite little bowl. And look how it's even a little bit different than how I applied it. Mm -hmm. Application elements glaze and heat work makes a big difference. You know, uh, if it's fired in a cooler part of the kiln, if your kiln is over firing, who applies it. This has a texture to it. So that made it break and flow a little bit differently than a smooth. You can paint, you know, a hundred mugs and they're all going to have a little bit of a variance if you're using elements glazes. So this is kind of what Chris was talking about. You know, get a whole stack of the bowls and put them with the glazes so people know what they look like. And then they can mix and match them too. They can set this bowl with that bowl and go, ooh, I really like those side by side, or I want to do a whole set with this. You know, it's, it's easy to picture what they're going to get that way. And it serves as a way to dispense your glaze so they know what they're painting. Well, and Krista and I both have a little obsession with little bowls too. So yeah. we really like those. That's right. Little bowls with full of acorns made by Teddy. Yeah, the RB is the reflection brush line with the acrylic handles and the CB brush line is ceramic brushes. All right, so I had to clean my hand up. It's getting all messy. Not wearing it, you're not doing it right. All right, so you can see that this black bunny actually looks gray. That tells me that it's dry enough that I could put the next coat on. You can see how glossy this bunny looks in comparison. So that's Mako's rule of thumb is when the gloss is off the glaze, go ahead and put your second coat on. See why we're doing several of these at one time so we're not just sitting here waiting for glaze to dry. So I'm going to get my coat to glaze on here, my second coat. Long, flowing, beautiful brush strokes. Another way we've done, we've taught classes too, when we've done several different, like we did a project one time where we had a heart that people would paint. It had like three different elements glazes on it. Well, we'll have one little plate as our palette for one heart and then another one for the next heart, another for the next heart, and we mark each color so people can keep track of what they're supposed to do next as well. This is a really good 
thing to teach or to have a simple glaze format for people to follow to just make a really pretty project very easily. Oh, let's see, Bianca says, they made some small flowers out of clay to, displays, to display the elements glazes. And they noticed a different outcome of color compared to the bisque, especially blue grotto. They use it on bisques or mugs, it looks different. Hmm, is there an explanation for why on a mug it might look blue gray and on a, the, her little clay flower, I think it sounds like the clay body. Yeah, that's what I would say. It's probably yeah. a different clay body, so it's gonna change it up a bit. Yeah, exactly. But it is another example of how different it looks with the different clay body and um, an application too. Yep. The texture of that flower would have some more pooled areas that would make it look a little darker, I would think, in some areas. Another thing that I like about this particular project is if you do a workshop, look how you can bump up the prices of this by having three pieces going on at one time that is very simple and easy. This would be perfect when I had ladies night because I would probably put out uh, directions, two coat of this and then two coats of the pink pixie, you know, because they're talking and not listening whatsoever. Uh, so they can do just that. It's like, it's not that hard. Everybody would be set up and I would not have each person have their own pot of glaze. I would have it sitting on the table and they could share because they're going to be talking and coming in at different times and you can just make it work because it's simple and easy, but yet people are getting out socializing, which right now people are, are dying to get back out and talk to others and socialize and connect with their friends. So this would be a good project to do that people could come in, get some cute displays, I'm oh, not displays, you know, cute designs, talk, interact. And really it's pretty foolproof. Oh, look at that, I missed a spot. Now this one I seem to put on a little bit heavier, so it's gonna be interesting to see the difference. I like, do think with, I'm sorry, Teddy, go ahead. I was um, just I, the application makes a difference. Yeah, I think with the elements glazes, as Teddy was saying, it makes people wanna do more. And I can totally see this being a beautiful dinnerware set. You know, something you would do more than painting Sometimes you might not want to paint four plates with a flower, but you this painting this in one sitting would be so easy. So people can get more done really easily. And then you've added to your bottom line. But you have to, if it's dinnerware, it has to be on the non-food surface area. Right, right. If we're doing the crystals. Yeah, I'm talking about the elements. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Good point though. Thank you for bringing that I up. I love elements. I, they just flow on so easily. They're pretty. They're multi-tonal. Uh, you know, you can blend them with other colors. And that's a thing that we're trying to show in here is the fact that you can combine glazes to get a whole different look. So I'm gonna let these get the second coat a little bit drier. You can put it under a fan if you have it. I'm gonna get these pots of glaze out of the way because those of you know me, that means that I'm gonna flip it all over the place. Hey, while we're letting this dry, did you guys know we have some new, 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 just announced mugs and tumblers? I'm going to show you. I mean, these were literally just announced. Your suppliers are getting them on the websites so you can order them. This one is a new, look at the facets on that. Isn't this cool? Okay, it's MB1575, it's called Faceted Tumbler. Uh, I like it because it's squared off. It really fits my hand nicely. It has a square bottom, which is a little different than anything else that we've been doing. So this is a new little tumbler, faceted. I see all kinds of design work. Um, maybe you can pull up the ad crystal or even some of the painted samples. Sure, I'll do that right now. Thank you, I keep seeing glaze on my hand. This is an arch tumbler. So you can see that you can do some cool design work. I'm picturing this kind of classy and elegant with some over glazes, some gold maybe right in through here or tipping some of these arches with some gold. I think that would be very pretty. This is MB1576 arch tumbler. 
And then, okay, this is going to be one of the favorites, I think. I love this. It's soft and feminine. Can you see? There, you can see it better. This is actually embossed with flowers and stems and leaves. And I think this would be stunning for Mother's Day, which is MV1579, the meadow mug. You can antique it. You can do design work with a tiny little designer liner brush. Foundation shears over this to give it a little soft color. I just think it's very pretty, very soft. And also it looks like uh, it was handmade with a, by a potter. Okay, those of you that are in my age group, does this not look retro back about like the 70s, maybe even the 80s? Uh, MV 1580, we call it the retro mug. So there's a lot of cool things that you can do in here. This is the hammered mug. We wanted it to look like copper, hammered copper. So it's the MV 1577 hammered tumbler. I like this because I see either somebody doing each dot a different color. You could start with a light blue and go to medium to a darker blue for an ombre or fade it into each other. You could use the elements glazes would be really cool because we were talking about the fact that they're multi-tonal. And when you have texture like this and it breaks over the texture, you're going to get highs and lows. So this would be very cool. And I got to say for design purposes, this is trying to make sure you can see the texture. There you go, you can see the texture better. Uh, we call this the knit mug, MB 1578 knit. But how many of you guys cross stitch? My mom taught me how to cross stitch. I still have all my stuff. And I'm thinking some of the patterns I have, I could mark it out and do a cross stitch pattern on here that would just be so stinking cute. Got the little seam on there where the fabric fits together. I just really like this new assortment of mugs and tumblers that we have. Okay. So I'm going to scroll down here. What I did was I went in here to the search over on the left side. And this is actually from the link that's in our email. So if you don't get our emails, sign up for our newsletters. Um, so you'll get all this information. So this is a link I entered in the search, all the item numbers, and just put a space in between because I wanted to get all these projects. And so you'll see some of the really cool things that we've done in here. Some have done with some antiquing, some are done with elements, some are done with stroking code or Spectaclear. And they're just really, really pretty. I like the, the hammered tumbler Teddy was talking about. We did kind of an ombre there and the knit mug. Um, uh, coming up in the next few weeks, I'll be doing Tip Tuesday, which I do every Tuesday at two o'clock on the Facebook Mako PYOP, which is also the Mako Creative Studios Facebook page, um, showing how we did some of these projects and giving some tips for some of these things. So feel free to come here and get all the instructions on how we did them, but also check in with us on Tip Tuesdays at two and see a little bit more in depth about some of these projects. Two o'clock Eastern time. That's correct, two o'clock Eastern time. All right, so my bunnies are, are getting dry. They're getting that matte, you know, the shine is off. So with crystal glazes, because of gravity, the heavies, the crystals are gonna to fall to the bottom. Uh, one tip is if you keep it upside down in your studio, the crystal will, crystals will be at the top and it'll make it a lot easier to mix up. But you can also, you know, shake it up, but you're definitely going to have to get down into the glaze. Oh, I did not wipe the lid on this one off. It crunchies everywhere. Okay, you want to get down into this jar and stir it up. Uh, you can use the back of a brush, a palette stick, popsicle stick, I don't care. But get down in there. Get down on it. Get down on it. Who is that? Cool in the game? Okay. I think so. Then I put the lid back on and shake it up. That way I know I have the crystals completely suspended in the base glaze. I always recommend that you glaze off of a palette instead of dipping out of the jar because again the crystals are going to fall down to the bottom of this. So I want to make sure that I have an even distribution of crystal glazes with base glazes. So I'm going to take my bunny 
I have my brush, I already primed it with some water. I'm gonna load this bad boy full. Can you guys see the crystals in here? There you go, see those chunks? Those are the crystal glazes that are gonna bloom when we fire this. I'm not gonna put the crystals on the bottom just because you don't need to, but if you look at these bases, look, we brought the crystals all the way down to the bottom. They don't run like they used to, okay? Back in the day, you didn't want to do this. They really are pretty stable now. Now you can see that there is a nice little chunk here that should be dribbled off. Uh, you can't always back off and just put one good coat on the bottom, but I have very good luck on going all the way down and not really having it run off. You do what you want to do because everybody does have a different touch on glazing, okay? So now what we're going to do with all of our bunnies, all of them get two coats of paint. Oh, wow, look at the size of that. I don't think that's a crystal. I think that's left over from the, the lip of this. So I'm going to take that off. I don't want to have a big glob right there. So I'm going to apply two coats of pink pixie over each of these elements. So I just have one brush that I'm going to use. And this is why I like to put it on a palette because this way I get an even distribution of the crystals and I'm not heavy in one spot and light in another. You can always manipulate where some of the crystals wind up if you want to. If you're too heavy of an area, you can take some of the crystals and move it around. Teddy, Sorry. we have a question about if you have a base glaze of elements, could you put jungle gems on top and then it be food safe if it has that base glaze of elements? No. No, because the crystal glazes are still going to, uh, at the 06 level, are still going to have that crazing around the uh, where the crystals bloomed, okay? So, because I've had people say, well, can I put clear glaze over it, over crystal glazes and make it dinnerware safe? It just doesn't work that way. And you still have the crazing and the fact that we don't put earthenware into the dishwasher. We can't say that it's properly sanitized. Good try though. We're all trying to get some way to make it dinnerware safe, but it just doesn't work that way, sadly. All right, all right good question though, good to have asked. Yeah, I'm gonna pour out a little bit more. So this is nice that I need to come back at some point and touch this up, but just for ease of movement and holding it, I'm gonna hold off right now. Look how nicely, I'm using a number eight fan brush right now, which is really huge. I typically use a, a six, number six. To me, it's easier to manage a little bit, but it still works nicely. And you'll notice that we have some big crystals and they're little bitty tiny ones. That's gonna give you that whole random look. They're not all evenly created, the crystals that is. All right, so now this dry time is gonna take a little bit longer just because we're, this is our third coat and we're actually gonna put a fourth coat on here. And you guys know that the earthenware bisque is extremely absorbent. So it's sucking in all that moisture into the clay body. So it's gonna take a little bit longer. If you have a fan, that's a good thing. You always use just room temperature, ambient air to dry your, your projects. We don't ever recommend adding heat to this because it dries the top surface, which creates kind of a skin to it, and the inside could still be wet, which could cause some fatigue-like effects. Anybody have any questions so far? We don't typically combine these two glazes, so, but I think they're so pretty and it definitely warrants learning using these different glazes together. I do have a question. 
You know, uh, like say when you're doing something round and you have um, crystal on the inside and crystal on the outside, you have a tendency for it to crack or, yeah. or was it, is it, is that correct? Am I saying that correct? Yeah, it can crack the vessels. For example, bases seem to have the biggest propensity to do that. So if I put, we don't recommend crystals on the inside because of that crazy, it could allow moisture to seep through. So on the inside of the base, we recommend either clear glaze or foundations glaze. So that it has a little flex to it. Crystal glazes move a lot. And what happens, depending on the strength of the bisque, when you have one glaze kind of moving just like this and the other one is like doing the cha-cha, you're putting some stress on the wear. That's why sometimes these split. It's just that the, the bisque couldn't take the stress. But well, what if you put elements on first? Um, you can put elements on the inside. It's pretty uh, moving glaze. And then your crystals on the outside. That can you probably put the They're crystals like on top of the elements? Outside and the crystals inside. Over. Inside? Yeah. I'm sorry, say it. I talked over you. Uh, can you do like what we're doing with these rabbits, putting the elements first and then the crystals, put that on the inside? I would not put crystals on the inside. I do elements on the inside. And Even outside. though. Okay. And then um, crystals on the outside only. Okay. Yeah, that should work. You know, you might have two cases and you get one split. It's just really weird. It has to do more so with the, the bisque and, you know, just the stress of it. But because elements are moving, if you put it inside and out with some crystals, that should work just fine. Yeah, it gets a little crazy once you start combining glazes, you know, that not everything is the same answer. I'm trying to find a question that we had. Oh, I think it was a question about how many coats of stroke and coat. If you were going to do stroke and coat first, how many would you do before you did your crystal glaze? Okay, so <clears throat> I would never put stroke and coat on the inside of a base with crystals on the outside, just because stroke and coat is so non-moving, uh, you know, maybe you call it a stiff glaze, okay? So that's where I would either go with, like you're saying, elements, foundations, or clear glaze. So if I'm going to use stroke and coat, uh, I'm looking around me trying to find a sample. You Just so you know, I think the question was actually, if you're going to do stroke and coat as a background color, not the inside, but if you're doing stroke and coat as a background color, sorry for the confusion. Yeah. I would do two coats of stroke and coat as the background or foundations that whatever matches the base color of your crystals. So like on here, you could do two coats of stroke and coat that's white or two coats of foundations that is white and then put one to two coats of crystals over and that's gonna work just fine. Are you doing the same with these elements, two coats and two coats of crystals on top? Yes. Thank you. I just got to join. I was like, <laughs> well, you caught up quick. Yeah, it was two coats of element, element glaze, and then two coats of crystal glaze. And pink pixie is the, is the same color on top of all the bunnies. Oh. Yeah, I know. Isn't that cool? So yeah, this, it is. Yeah, this color mixed with rose granite on top of rose granite gives us this cute little bunny. Oh, yeah, that's how, you know, it's just amazing. So, of course, what's nice is we have a, a staff person that did all this testing and figured it out, which saves you time and money. Amen. <laughs> yeah, and playing with it. So, you know that this combination is going to work. If you ask me, well, what if I put pink pixie over, you know, another crystal glaze? I don't know because I haven't seen it. You know, that's where you just test. Try it. All right. Like so Christmas. Exactly. Opening the kiln is like Christmas. It can be a good day or a bad day, quite frankly. But it's so much fun to see how things turned out 
uh, when I had my studio, I hated it when I was off for a couple of days and the customer picked up their work prior to me getting to see it. Like, oh, I wanted to see that. Hey, um, let me show y'all something really quick. If this is a good time, Teddy, I want to show them where to find some good info on the website. Um, so we're talking about, somebody else had asked me about layering colors on top of foundations and things like that. Or if they, if you had a, she had a dried up kind of um, crystal glaze. So I told her she could add a little bit of the foundation base to it if she wanted to, you know, kind of try to reconstitute it a little bit instead of adding a bunch of water. Um, but a lot of people do ask, you know, when you're layering these crystal glazes with each other or on a stroking coat or on elements, what the base glaze is. So you'll kind of know, cause some are translucent, some are opaque. If you go to our Jungle Gems page that you'll see here and click on the color swatches here, this little um, light colored button. When I click it, it's gonna become the dark colored button, which means it's the dominant one right now. Um, and you can filter by palette. So I'm just gonna make it to 06 cause that's what we're working with today. And you'll see all the colors. Now what I'm gonna do is click on like Noel here. And then first it'll come up like this. If I click see product information, it will list on here beside Kono 06 that it's an opaque white base glaze. So if I'm gonna layer this on top of red, you'll know that you're gonna have some white showing up on top of that. Um, let's look at another one really quick so I can show you that. Uh, you know, I'm gonna jump on that real quick mm -hmm. also. So you have Noel. Mm -hmm. If you put Noel down first and then you put blue stroke and coat over it, what's mm -hmm. going to happen? Crystals are going to bloom and push its way through. So instead of having a white background, you're now going to have a blue background with red and green chunks. So you can put crystals on top of the stroke and coat or under and get some cool looks. Exactly. Now this lemon lime is a, I'm sorry, go ahead. And these mm -hmm. are two coats of each. That's what we're doing, correct, on these projects. That's what we're doing. Okay. Okay. And so with this lemon lime, it is a transparent base glaze. So if you put this on top of something else, whatever you put it on top of is going to show through more than what the other one, than that opaque one that we just showed you. So if you come to the website and click on each color, you can see how they are going to look and what the base glaze is. Okay. Does it not, does it not tell you that on the outside of the bottle, that it's translucent or opaque? It may, it probably says it in the description, but it doesn't have like on the front, it doesn't say like, this is a translucent crystal glaze. Okay. Um, but a lot of times, you know, when you're looking for a color, you're shopping online or something and you want to know what it is. So if you go on the website, you can see what it's going to be. Does it show on that jar, Teddy? No, it does not say whether it is an opaque bag. Okay. So the best way to do that is just to refer to the website and that way you'll know exactly what that color is made of. If it's a translucent, if it's an opaque or what. It's hard to get all the information that we really want on a label like that, you know, about other, about the color. Yeah. I love the transparent glazes. Mm -hmm. They are pretty. Yeah, you can do some cool things. I, you know what, May, um, I'm going to try to when I send the email. I hope I have it. Uh, but you know, if you combine a crystal glaze over another crystal glaze, you can get a third color. And some of them are gorgeous. I know we have them someplace on the website. I'll just have to look and can provide that link. Because, I mean, that's just another way of utilizing your crystals and creating new looks, you know, combining the two. So there's just so many things that you can do. Uh, while we're waiting for glaze to dry, and also if you have any questions, either, you know, shout it out or put it on the chat. But I want to show you what we're going to do next month on our Zoom that Chris is teaching. Which one are you doing? The blue one? The yellow. Yellow, okay. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do a feature of foundations glaze. So this is the project for next month, but look how you can change it up by using a foundations in a different color. So this is gonna be kind of fun, it's kind of cool, it's trendy, it's kind of you. So we'll- It's beautiful. Isn't that the gorgeous? Um, I wish I could say I designed it, but I didn't. But at least you'll learn the techniques and then you make it your own by changing it up to different colors. And I'm going to be uh, out of the country in England teaching. So Krista is going to be the master. I'm going to start getting my second coat on these because I'm impatient. Does anybody have any questions about um, 
the elements or the crystal glazes, what you could put together, what may or may not work, you know. I think sometimes it can be a little daunting that there isn't always one answer. It depends on what you're putting together combination wise, you know, on the movement, you can always reset, recede some of your glazes or your coats. I'd love to answer any questions because this is a fairly easy project. It's not gonna, you know, we're kind of hitting the end of these at, at one hour. What you're going to do is let the glaze dry you will stilt these pieces unless you put no glaze on the bottom and then you could dry foot it. Since I want to put mine outside, I'm going to uh, make sure that there's glaze everywhere. And you can also see on some of these, I kind of pat my glaze on so that I'm not moving my crystal, like I'm get back over here, crystals quite as much as a brush stroke will. You can really see the difference on that second coat because the base glaze behind it is opaque. I'm not seeing my brush strokes as much now. You're putting the crystals all the way down to the bottom of the item. Now you said that um, these crystals are more stable now because we had, we've had a lot of problems with people putting crystals all the way down to the bottom of the uh, piece because they just run onto the stilt. They've made a mess in our, our uh, um, kiln, so is, is it changing now? Well, you know, application does make a difference. And if they're getting too crazy, a couple of things that you could do is like on, I don't know which bunny can I pick up? I'm just gonna pick up one of my bunnies. So let's say that they're really heavy glazers. And I think that's where you run into it. So here it's a little bit lighter than it is right here. But once this is dry, I can come back with my finger and I can knock off some of these crystals right down around the bottom. That will help it from moving as much. That's one way of doing it. You know, you can tell them to put one coat all the way down and then the second coat stop a quarter of an inch. You know, everybody's gonna have a little bit of a different experience and you can manage it. Um, you know, it's like, go ahead. Yeah, when, you, when you're dealing with, with new people all the time, especially when you're in a resort, people are coming with pretty much no experience yeah. so i'm kind of like the crystal person in our room like i mix up to even three or four different crystals together for different effects but yeah they usually come to me for the expertise and i have always encouraged them on almost any piece they do to come up about a half an inch or so from the bottom with a base color mm -hmm. first and bring the crystals down to it so we have that little bit of space. Yeah. So if they're a heavy glazer, that glaze, the crystals are gonna at least stop far enough up so that they're not going to make a mess out of our stilts and our kilns. So this is yeah. how I've been doing it. So if that's still the right technique, then, then I know yeah. I'm doing things right. Yes, you are, man. And you know what? I always say if it, what works for you, you just do it. That's fine. Okay. You okay. Know? You know, we used to have our head artists here that never did more than two coats of anything. But how many people sit and glaze for 40 hours a week? I mean, her touch was immaculate. She could just get it down there so perfect. I'm not that person, you know, but I've kind of figured out how many coats I can do to go all the way to the bottom. If you want to make it foolproof, I agree with you. Just put one okay. base coat down and seed your crystals on the second one. That is perfect. Yeah.